Today's bloodbath is in one group pretty tightly focused. The quantum stocks, big winners of late, some speculating bigger, better, faster than AI are giving back a lot. Nick Aurora joins us, founder of the Aurora Port, a nuclear physicist in his first life, uh, right. guest here uh, yes. lately. And last time you were telling us this group looked pretty bubbly, yeah. pretty speculative. Yeah. So is this a reckoning, the beginning of a reckoning, just a little bit of a pullback? What do you think? No, no, no. This is a reckoning. Uh, people who are in these stocks, for the most part, don't know what they're doing. Um, think they I mean, don't understand the science? They don't understand the science at all. And they are in a fancy land to make up, you know, this is going to be this, this is going to be this, without understanding what it is. So if you know what you're doing, this is, to me, it's like a Christmas every day. This <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you told us last time you were looking for short opportunities. Opportunity. You know, for example, the Aurora Port members, we gave a signal yesterday morning before this bloodbath, actually, bloodbath Saturday in the afternoon, but, you know, before yeah, today, it started really, a lot of it. Yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, Rigatti, that's on your board there, RGTI, we were shooting at $19. Then in the afternoon, we added more. And this morning we covered. Yeah. Great gains. Yeah. Right? And so every day there's an opportunity in these stocks. <laughs> How much do you think it's worth it to try and buy dips on stuff that had explosive moves? I mean, there's going to be folks who try and hold the line here, right? These were penny stocks, a lot of them, right. just months ago. Right. So do you think folks will look at a stock like a QB, QUBT, it was 35 cents, you know, in October, <laughs> and go, all right, 10 bucks, I got to try it there? Yeah, people will do that. So we've been short on QUBT, you know. Okay. Uh, we made good money on it. Uh, we'll be out here. Um, and QUBT, if it runs up again, like maybe 15, 16, we'll short sell it. Okay. Uh, I would not buy QUBT. But among these stocks, I and Q, I'll take a shot at it from the long side. Why uh, that one? Well, so in Consumer Electronics Show CES, there's a panel tomorrow on quantum computing, and uh, I and Q is participating. I'm hoping somebody asks them a question of their address. Is Jensen right? Jensen yeah. Wong of NVIDIA, you know, 15, 20 years. What did you think of those comments where he basically said that, look, this is like two decades out for real practical purposes, or has he got his own kind of book to protect You're at smart. the moment? You're smart. No, he's right, but you got to parse his words. He said before they're very useful, right? Okay, yeah. Very useful meaning compared to what computers do today. Okay. And in that respect, he's right, I agree with that. But Mark didn't understand it, because I think quantum is maybe less than five years away, where it can do one thing. And that is, it can start breaking encryptions okay. on crypto. Okay. And think about it. So the problem with quantum is, it's full of errors, right? And people don't understand this, but there are a lot of different to technologies, right? Google's Willowa is superconducting technology. Ion Q's is a trapped ion technology. There are six or seven of them, the semiconductor dot, and so on and so on. And they all have different error rates. And people don't understand it. Even Willow, as impressive as that it is, is one to the 10 to the minus three, meaning you're getting one error out of a thousand. Okay. Uh, but that's in very controlled, only one thing. Mm -hmm. I suspect in general things, they're probably going to get 10, 15 percent error. Mm -hmm. So you really can use it. Okay. But now, if you're trying to not do encryption, but if you're trying to break encryption, i.e., you want to steal somebody's crypto. Uh, the process <laughs> goes from a different direction. You don't care if it's uh, not right most of the time. Exactly. You can I'll take as many errors, that's what it is, right? You keep on doing it, give it's it It's an doing infinite it. a process of elimination. That's right, that's right. So that makes sense. So, so I think there are going to be a lot of opportunities in this uh, uh, quantum resistant encryption and those kind of things. I think somewhere we'll see a lot of volatility in cryptos and Bitcoin because of this. And I mean, it's going to be Christmas. It's just going to be great money making opportunity. Uh, one of them is Seals Q. I love it. L A E S. That ticker. What do you think about them? Okay, so Seals Q is a subsidiary of a company called W Key. Right. Uh, yeah. Wise Key. Wise Key. Mm -hmm. It's Swiss based. Uh, they're developing this quantum resistance things. Yeah. Uh, to help people protect themselves right, against the aggressive right, quantum right, computing. Exactly, right? exactly. 
So from what I'm able to tell, they have a long, long ways to go, okay? You could not buy that stock based on fundamental merits, but they have a long ways to go. We don't know if they're going to succeed or not. But the way the crowd goes with sentiment, mm -hmm. they're good ones. Sure. To keep on your radar, radar right? Yeah. They, I mean, you buy them and they go low. When you think there's a scare of some kind of quantum encryption breaking, you buy them. Right. They're running it up. Sell up. <laughs> uh, do you think that um, the, uh, to, to come back to Jensen's comment, the idea of this kind of being a way, it's interesting that there are different tech that can compete, kind of a large language model, computers that are being developed for Blackwell, and then possibly these quantum supercomputers. I mean, those are probably the ones that are way off, but the market kind of thinking that it's like a knock-on AI trade to me is like, a great deal of irony in a way. It's like it's one thing yeah. to buy Constellation Energy or an energy yeah, provider yeah, like we different. talked about. That's different. That's this different. is more just like because one tech is having a breakthrough that this other tech's gonna have a big breakthrough. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think people are insane. Uh, that's why I use the word fantasy. They fantasize this is gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. I think from an investment perspective, um, so we're taking three paths, right? One path is we're educating our members about quantum because people need to learn, mm -hmm. right? And if we start seeing big, big corrections, we'll start taking what we call a long-term strategic positions. You think some of these do have long-term? Yeah, yeah, I think there's a worthwhile. For example, INQ, okay. it's at $30, right? If I were to see it at $5 in a big bear market. Oh, sure, you're gonna love it. I'll love it, right? The Gaddy, if I see it at $2, <laughs> I'll probably take on a position longer okay. term, right? And hold on. Lock you think they could have volatility like that? Kind of like some oh, of the yeah. mean stocks we've seen? Yeah, absolutely. Go all the way back down to where they were early absolutely. December? Absolutely, absolutely. And in the meanwhile, you know, we trade for our members both from the long side and the short side, right? So I, I don't know why people just trade only from the long side. I mean, make money from both sides. <laughs> yeah, um, and I know that's what you like to do, uh, try and hit it on both. Yeah. Uh, okay, so looking for eye on Q tomorrow at CES. Uh, from the scientific mind, if I could tap into your science mind sure. real quick, uh, is what is in your mind the main limitation beyond the cryptographic prowess that we might be able to, because to your point on the cryptographic stuff, you can, if you can house a quantum machine in whatever facility that has the environment it can function, you can just run it on infinite to try and crack a code. Right. But to like have an application similar to what today's uh, silicon-based semiconductors do or what LLM uh, machines will do, um, what is that limitation that quantum doesn't have right now? Error rates. Errors are a lot. Okay, so too many. Right, and uh, there are different ways to solve the errors. And w what you're doing is you're bringing in more qubits to correct the errors. You're also bringing in faster conventional computers to correct the errors. Mm. So the errors is a problem. Uh, I don't, I think Jensen is right. We, we're probably 10 years away before the errors are reduced so much that you say, yeah, I can use it, I see. right? Okay. But for some niche applications, sure. And the crowd psychology, <laughs> sure, let's play it. It sounds like maybe the effort required to harness this great power of quantum is not worth the payout at this point. Not, not yet. You've yeah. got to have a very, for, if you're investing, not, not trading, investing, mm -hmm. you need to buy these stocks at a rock bottom price, which we may get. Okay. You know, it may take a year, right? We may have a big bear market, and these are the kind of stocks that lose 95% of their value. Yeah. And that's when you buy them. So, but the key is you have to be educated before then, right? So that's what we're doing with our members. We're educating them on quantum, we're helping them with trades, but we're also educating them so that if these stocks fall, we're talking about 80, 90% from where they are, mm -hmm. we want to buy them. Okay, so looking for more downside to enter for most of them, an exception being eye on Q to watch for tomorrow around CES. Sounds good. Love the catch up. Happy New Year, Nick. Thanks Happy a lot. Happy New Year, Oliver. Yeah.